I didn't fall down yet. See, that's where y'all went wrong. I didn't fall down yet. On three, y'all come on in. When I say three, I want everybody to come back on because I didn't fall down yet. See, I faked y'all out. I just bent my knee. But I'm a good God in the alley with Sally. Good God, get down on the bad back, on the good back. Get up on the good foot, bad back. I love you more than you do myself, I think. Folks, welcome inside the Parisi Palace at 2919 East Broadway. This is the Jake Feinberg Show on Power Talk 1210. Thank you so much for being part of our program today. My show revolves around the four L's, leadership, love, life, and lineage, and the ongoing story of real music made by real artists. Rat on, rat on, rat on. My guest is not himself these days, because if he was, he would be settling into the latter stages of life, winding down and having his larger family contingent pick up where he left off. But that's not how this chapter is being written. My guest today is performing at a prolific clip, crisscrossing the country in an effort to be a link in the chain. It could be doing the hickey burr with Cleveland Eaton raising money for Miles College in Alabama or any black college that supports education. It could be spoofing Barry White or Jimmy James Brown while Melvin Wow Wow Reagan lays down those whammy bar hits. But really, my guest continues on in this host's mind because he still wants people to find their true nature, go towards their strengths, and be fearless because my guest is fearless. He is a believer in humanity and helping those get ahead, thinking on the spot during the original jam sessions with Quincy Jones and Ray Brown, locking the groove with Monty Alexander. Or maybe it was the time when Bobby Porter Hall was living at home with her mother in Detroit, 17 years old, when my guest invited her out to Vegas and eventually Los Angeles to open up for him. It's the humanity shown to him back when he was slinging drinks at a local Philly bar during the burgeoning folk scene. And to this day, my guest is still showing up at the Newport Folk Festival, doing renditions of the car song. He developed his comedy chops around the magical hard bop of the times, fluting the blues with James Moody, playing Bag's Groove with Milt Jackson, or bebopping with Dizzy Gillespie, Eddie Bongo Brown, and Mary Lou Williams. He pushed people out of their comfort zone to get the most out of them, like the Latin cat Johnny Pacheco, or the organ grinder Richard Groove Holmes, who showed up on the comedy skits and sitcoms. Charles Lloyd called my show a search of inner life. Dozens of musicians have told me that I changed their life because I rediscovered relic vinyl they were on, that they themselves had given up on as little more than a moment in time. For them to come around to the notion that their music put me on my trip is a revelation, or rather, a love supreme. Dr. Bill Cosby, welcome back to the Jake Feinberg Show. I, I have a problem. What's that? I was in the, uh, in the bathroom in New York City and uh, getting ready to put myself together to go down and have some breakfast. Food floors down. I'm listening to WBGO and uh, comes on a song similar to the feel that I want because I think I'm going to have a television show on NBC and uh, I've already set up um, my character to be a retired professor of humanities, 70 some years old, and his wife, who is 70 something, and she too is a, uh, a graduate of college. She's uh, 
retiring, but not really. She still does things out in the neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. And I have a daughter, two, two daughters and a son. And then we have the grandchildren, and that plays into the generation. Ben Webster and Art Tatum. The song is, I can't believe that you're in love with me. <laughs> and I hear the similarity of what I want for my theme song. Because this brushes and the piano player is our datum. I don't know this. I don't know this. I just know that it's a ballad and there's Webster playing the the air and the note. And I said, that's that's what I want. That's what I want. I don't I don't want the song, but I want the feel. The feel to and, and, and I want the feel for the theme song. Do you think Hugh Hefner falls into that category as well as far as allowing giving artists the opportunity, especially black artists and black patrons, to enjoy their art form? A picture of Hugh Hefner is one that says there's a lot of good stuff you know nothing about. I mean, that's, that, that, that's to talk to and wave your hand broadly. Um, you may not care for the centerfold, et cetera, et cetera. One of my jokes was I would like to thank Playboy for doing what National Geographic <laughs> didn't have the guts to do. <laughs> <laughs> band would he show up for that <laughs> yeah yeah and and so the, the, but but to get back to that club right yeah the club stands for Missouri and you can't you can't be in here 
the, the, because we don't want these these uh, Negroes in here, then there's no club. Right. Okay, we'll find it. Okay. Because uh, greedy people can always be swayed. They have to be watched when it comes to the count, but they can always be swayed. Talking to Dr. Bill Cosby here on Power Talk 1210. And, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Cosby, since the last time we spoke, almost two years ago, I've, I've had some extremely serendipitous conversations with certain artists. And uh, so we have a we have a game on this program called Name That Tune, but in this case, it's going to be Name That Person. I want you to take a listen uh, to this audio clip and then come back. I'd like to get your thoughts on it, okay? Deal. Bill opened for me. The first gig he ever played in New York was in the Gaslight, yes. Uh, we were good friends for a while there, but I haven't seen him much lately. I saw Bill about two years ago at Newport, and he introduced me on stage by doing an imitation of how I sang, uh, I think it was a Woody Guthrie car song. He did an imitation of me singing a car song. Oh, my. Which he remembered from being in the gaslight back when he first came to New York, and I don't know what year that was. It must have been 1963 or 4. The crowd must have been low. Can you do, can you, well, can you, can you in, in, uh, impersonate that? I couldn't impersonate that now, right now. I'm just <laughs> how, how, uh, that, you, so, so you're, just to be, to be clear, Cosby opened for you at the gas, his first stand-up show was, and he opened yeah, for you. his first gig in New York. I, I uh, saw Bill just a little while before that in a bar down in Philadelphia where he was bartending and telling stories. And somebody said, you got to go downstairs in that little place there in the corner. And there's a guy in there named Cosby who is a bartender, and he is a very funny storyteller. <laughs> Go see him. Uh, so I went down in there. I had my guitar with me, and Bill invited me to play a few songs. And I got behind the bar and used Bill's microphone. And uh, as I was playing, I heard another guitar right through the wall from the next door bar. And I recognized the guitar player. It was one of my very favorite guitar players. Well, first of all, it's Rambling Jack. That's Rambling Jack, Elliot. That's exactly right. And yeah, and, and Rambling Jack, it was called Rambling Jack because he, he, he just, he would get up there. <laughs> Jack had the kind of nose that, that uh, was was thin and went out, and then he had the cowboy hat, like a Wyoming <laughs> cowboy hat, and, and he had the microphone, and the nose, the nose would be about a half inch, and he'd stand there, and he'd, uh, he'd damn near put you to sleep. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, this is the, the Gaslight Coffee House, 116 McDougal Street. And it's selling all these, uh, this is 63, frappes and things with the machines <laughs> on in the back room. And then, uh, and then they, uh, half a pound of whipped cream and then put a cinnamon stick in the thing and sprinkle powdered chocolate and uh, Jack would start to talk about uh, this is what he got to me and the dust bowl and so forth and so on and he go on and I said um, hey boy ride in the car car take no ride in the car car I'm going for a ride in the car, car, ride in the car. So we can beep, beep, going in the car, car. And I, I just sat, man, because um, my job is to come on after he leaves. And, I mean, Jack could play, but I really, uh, folk music for me, mm -hmm. unless you were Odetta, you know, with that kind of power. Right. 
I love myself more than I love myself. Uh, that was off an album, uh, Rat right On, Rat right On, Rat right On, 1977. And you were doing just uh, your own impersonations of different, uh, you know, individualists and artists. And I, I wanted to ask, I mean, how many takes did it take you to do that? I've been cracking up listening to that thing, especially when you said three. And then all of a sudden, you know, Wayne Jackson, you know, Stu Gardner brought him in. How many takes did it take you to do that, uh, that, that James Brown spoof? Uh, 